From Pluto's lonely perch at the edge of the solar system, even the closest star is unimaginably distant. But what if you could stand on Pluto and gaze at Alpha Centauri? How far is it really? And what would the stars look like from there? Imagine you're on the solar system's outskirts, standing on Pluto's icy surface at minus 380 degrees Fahrenheit minus 229 degrees Celsius, looking up at the sky. In that dark immensity, a star shines with a faint light. It's Alpha Centauri. This star system, the closest to ours, is approximately 4.367 light years from the Sun. Pluto is one of the farthest bodies in the solar system. But does that mean Pluto is much closer to Alpha Centauri than any other body? What would the closest stars to our solar system look like if we were standing on Pluto's surface? In this video, we will answer that and other questions. Let's get started. Before we let our imaginations run wild, we need to clarify essential details about the units of measurement used in the universe. On our planet, we usually measure the distance from one city to another in kilometers or miles. But those units are too small in space because the distances are enormous. If we were to use kilometers to measure distances between planets, the numbers quickly become unmanageably large, which is also difficult to write and tedious. Therefore, astronomers use units of measurement that are better adapted to the enormous distances of the universe, the astronomical unit, AU, and light years. One astronomical unit, AU, equals the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, 149,597,870.7 kilometers. A light year is the distance that light travels in a vacuum during a year, approximately 9.4607 trillion kilometers, 9.4607 times 10 superscript 1 superscript 2 km. That said, Pluto orbits the Sun at an average distance of 39 Australian dollars and 50 cents equivalent to 5,906 million kilometers. For its part, Alpha Centauri is, on average, 4.367 light years, or 41.3 trillion kilometers, from the Sun. If we wanted to calculate the approximate distance from Pluto to Alpha Centauri, we don't need to draw a curved line from Pluto's orbit. Just take the distance of Alpha Centauri to the Sun and subtract the distance from Pluto to the Sun, and this would give us something like this. Distance from the Sun to Alpha Centauri equals 41.3 trillion kilometers. Distance from the Sun to Pluto equals 5.9 billion kilometers. Distance from Pluto to Alpha Centauri is almost equal to 41.3 trillion kilometers. 5.9 billion kilometers is almost equal to 41.294 trillion kilometers. In astronomical terms, that difference is negligible, but it shows us something fascinating. Pluto is almost as far from Alpha Centauri as the Sun. In other words, the distance between the Sun and Alpha Centauri is, in astronomical terms, about the same as between Pluto and Alpha Centauri. And yes, this fact may have surprised you or even disappointed you a little. Despite being nearly 6 billion kilometers from the Sun, Pluto is still about the same distance from Alpha Centauri as the Sun itself. But don't leave just yet. Because this detail, far from being trivial, contains one of the most disturbing and powerful realities of modern astronomy. The stars are so absurdly far away that even leaving the solar system does not bring us closer to them in any meaningful way. If we condensed the entire solar system into the size of a penny, Alpha Centauri would still be more than 300 meters away. Isn't it incredible that our journey to the stars is just beginning after we have left all known planets and reached Pluto? After all, Pluto is not the end, but the beginning of our incredible journey. Hey, before moving on, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can improve them for you, the viewer. Plus, don't forget to subscribe to our channel by making sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily videos. At the frontiers of the solar system, Alpha Centauri appears as a bright star in the southern hemisphere from Earth, visible to the naked eye as a single point of light in the constellation Centaurus. But it rarely stands out because the planets tend to get all the attention. On a typical night from Earth, Jupiter, Saturn, Venus, and Mars shine much brighter than Alpha Centauri. But what do these planets look like from Pluto? From Pluto, the inner planets are seen as weak spots in the sky. Their brightness decreases dramatically because they are far away and depend on reflected sunlight. Because they are so far from the Sun, the Sun receives less light 
and the little light it reflects travels enormous distances before reaching Pluto. By contrast, stars are so far away that moving within the solar system doesn't significantly change their distance or brightness. The stars shine with almost the same intensity on Earth and Pluto. That's why, on Earth, the planets stand out in the sky. But since Pluto, it's the opposite. The planets have been turned off, and the stars have taken center stage. It's a reminder of how small our solar system is in front of the universe. From Pluto, the stars dominate the sky. Does it mean that Alpha Centauri looks bigger from Pluto than from Earth? No. What happens is that being so far from the sun and the inner planets, in this place, the planets and the sun do not shine as brightly as the stars. In other words, it's not that the stars look bigger or shine brighter. It's that, on Pluto, the planets do not shine as brightly as on Earth. In the ranking of the five brightest bodies in Pluto's sky, the Sun is in first place. The Sun would still be the brightest body, but only as a distant point. Second, there would be Charon, Pluto's moon. Thirdly, Sirius is the brightest star after the Sun. On Earth, planets like Jupiter and Venus are brighter than the star Sirius, but from Pluto, the planets in our solar system are too dim and are outshone by stars. Canopus would be fourth, and Alpha Centauri would be fifth. Yes, on Pluto, Alpha Centauri would occupy the fifth place of the brightest objects in the sky, above planets such as Jupiter or Saturn. On Pluto, the stars would be the brightest bodies in the sky by far. To see the first planet visible from Pluto, we would have to move to the 13th position of the brightest bodies in the sky and in that position would be Jupiter, behind stars such as Vega, Capella, or Rigel. While on Earth, Alpha Centauri goes unnoticed, eclipsed by the brilliance of nearby planets. From Pluto, it stands as the fifth brightest object in the sky, reminding us that, in the far reaches of the solar system, it is the stars, not the planets, that reign in darkness. Although it may seem that the stars are fixed in the sky, they all move through the galaxy with their own speeds and trajectories. Some move away slowly, some get closer, and a few do so fast enough to alter our view of the sky on scales of thousands or millions of years. Such is the case of Alpha Centauri, our closest stellar neighbor and a future visitor. Currently, Alpha Centauri is 4.367 light years from the Sun, but astronomers have calculated that, due to its proper and radial motion, its distance will decrease over time. If nothing changes drastically, the Alpha Centauri system will reach its closest approach to our solar system in about 27,000 years, reducing its distance to 3.26 light years. That difference of more than 1.1 light years may seem small, but it represents more than 10 trillion kilometers of approach. To understand the impact, let's remember that the entire Oort cloud, the halo of icy debris surrounding the solar system, does not extend beyond 1.58 light years. Therefore, even at its closest approach, Alpha Centauri will remain very far from any solar body, at least from our human point of view. Now, returning to our initial calculation, if Alpha Centauri comes within 3.26 light years of the Sun, and Pluto is about 5.9 billion kilometers, 0 0.00063 light years, from it, then the distance between Pluto and Alpha Centauri will be about 3.259 light years, or 30.9 trillion kilometers. Interestingly, although this approach is astronomically small, it will not imply any significant alteration to the solar system. Alpha Centauri's gravitational tides will not affect the planets or destabilize orbits. However, some objects in the Oort cloud are likely to be slightly disturbed. In extreme theoretical scenarios, these events could trigger comet showers into the inner solar system, but there is no evidence that this will happen with Alpha Centauri. So while Alpha Centauri will come closer than ever, it will still be an unreachable destination with our current technologies. But its movement reminds us that the universe is in constant transformation. And who knows, perhaps when that time comes, Pluto will already be a human observation station ready to receive the first interstellar travelers. Imagine an interstellar spacecraft from Alpha Centauri, whose nearest star, Proxima Centauri, hosts at least one confirmed planet, Proxima b. This rocky, Earth-sized exoplanet is located in its star's habitable zone, making it a fascinating candidate for life. Now let's assume, without abandoning scientific rigor, 
that an advanced civilization inhabits Proxima b and has developed the capacity for interstellar travel. Such technology would require mastering concepts that we are just beginning to theorize today. Nuclear fusion propulsion, laser sails, or even space warp engines. If these beings were to begin their journey into our system, Pluto would be the first central object they would encounter. Why Pluto? First, because it is on the edge of the solar system, about 5.906 million kilometers from the sun, far from the intense solar radiation and the inner planets. From the perspective of an interstellar spacecraft, Pluto represents the gateway to the solar domain. In addition, it is a geologically interesting body. Although small, 2,377 kilometers in diameter, it features nitrogen glaciers, a tenuous methane atmosphere, mountains of ice, and possibly a subsurface ocean. An uncrewed alien spacecraft or an advanced crew could establish a temporary Pluto orbit base. From there, they could observe Earth in the distance, a small blue sphere more than 6 billion kilometers away, without interfering directly. It would be a perfect place to collect information without being detected, analyze electromagnetic emissions, and study our technologies, languages, and behaviors, all without crossing the threshold of contact. This raises interesting questions. Would a civilization prefer to observe before acting? Would you expect signs of welcome? What if they are already doing it? From Pluto, with telescopes and advanced technology, you can spy on Earth without being detected. Even our probes, such as New Horizons, show that we can study planets from great distances without setting foot on their surface. In the hypothetical future, it's possible that Pluto will play that same role, not for us but for others as an outpost of surveillance or perhaps a neutral point for first contact. Because if a ship comes from so far away, it won't want to arrive suddenly. First, they observe. Then, they'll decide. And Pluto, it will be the silent sentinel of that history. In 2015, the New Horizons spacecraft, after almost a decade of travel, flew by Pluto and gave us the first detailed images of its surface. It was an extraordinary feat, accomplished with a ship the size of a piano traveling at more than 50,000 kilometers per hour and powered only by a small nuclear generator. But that feat also revealed an uncomfortable truth. Pluto is incredibly far away, yet it is still part of our own neighborhood. As we said at the beginning, the average distance between Earth and Pluto is 39 Australian dollars and 50 cents, or 5,906 million kilometers. That distance seems titanic until we compare it with that of Alpha Centauri for 0.367 light years, or 41.3 billion kilometers. In other words, Alpha Centauri is about 7,000 times farther away than Pluto. Even the fastest ship, if headed toward Alpha Centauri at the speed of New Horizons, 14 kilometers per second, would take more than 90,000 years to arrive. And that's without stopping, without fail, and without considering that it is an uncrewed mission. Some have proposed alternatives. The Breakthrough Starshot project, for example, proposes sending small probes powered by laser sails capable of reaching 20% of the speed of light. This would reduce the journey to about 20 years. But this project is still in the experimental phase, and no country, not even the most advanced space agencies, has yet launched a spacecraft close to that goal. The truth is that, with the technology of the 21st century, we can neither reach Alpha Centauri from Earth nor from Pluto. Energy needs, radiation risks, navigation problems, and communication with a spacecraft light years away are all monumental challenges that our civilization cannot yet solve. And here's the paradox. Although Pluto lies on the solar system's fringes, in cosmic terms, it's right next to us. Its distance to Alpha Centauri is almost identical to that of the Sun, barely reduced by a few billion kilometers that make no difference on a stellar scale. It reminds us how tiny we are, even when we think we've come a long way. Pluto represents humanity's reachable limit, an endpoint on our current map. Beyond that, everything is speculation, hope, and dreams yet to be built. But every breakthrough, mission, and telescope is one more step towards that stellar frontier. And who knows, maybe someday, not tomorrow or in this generation, but in the deep future, the children of our children's children will look back from some planet of Alpha Centauri and wonder what life was like when Pluto was still the last known stop for humanity. Hit that subscribe button, share your thoughts below, 
and let's keep exploring the together. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next.